hello november has arrived and while my latest harvest is all green i can't wait to give you a tour of the garden because there are so many beautiful colorful things growing and i'm really excited about what is happening in my garden as we lead into the warmer months Before I give you the full tour and show you how all of our new garden beds are going, just a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button now. That means when we upload our monthly garden tours, you won't miss them. Uh, and also if you could hit the like button, that's just a little way to support this channel and it helps other people find this video. So let's start with this bed over here. This is the very first bed that I established in my garden and it's not great in the winter, pretty good in the summer. So it is now getting plenty of sun and my tomatoes, I've got tomatoes in a few different locations in the garden, but you can see these are growing quite strong. I've got flower buds there, flower buds there. That one's a sweet million, so there'll be little red tomatoes. Oh, that one's growing. It's grown a lot since I last saw it. Some flower buds in the middle too there. If you want to see actual tomatoes, here we go. So these ones I think are my yellow honeybee tomatoes. So they should be small yellow tomatoes. Whoop! There they are. You might have got your tomatoes in early this season, like me, but if you haven't, the deadline is approaching. For anyone in Victoria, the unofficial rule is that all tomatoes should be in by cup day. And this weekend is cup weekend. Hope you all have a fabulous, fabulous weekend, whatever you're choosing to do. If you are gonna be at home and you haven't got your tomatoes in yet, it is time to put them in. If you're watching this, you're likely to be watching a little bit down the track. Timing is flexible as I've learned recently. But as I said, unofficial rule, cup day in Melbourne is when all your tomato plants should be in the ground. You can see down here, I've also got some basil, more basil and more basil. I've got some uh, spinach over here, which was growing in a pot, but I was tidying that pot up. And so I've transplanted it here. Spinach doesn't generally like to be transplanted. So I'm actually surprised that they've survived and they're starting to grow in the middle. I've planted some nasturtiums over there that I got from the Kindy Fun Day. They are supposed to be very good for the garden, attracting pollinators and things like that. So that's a new thing that I'm trying. And over here, I have planted a whole lot of calendula flowers again, just trying to get those pollinators in. They are clearly not flowers yet. I stuck them in as seeds, but they are growing away. Proof that it is tomato season is all these new little sprouts that have come through my compost. Oh. On the other side over here, I've got my spring onions and one of a number of spring onions. You can see down here, I've been harvesting them and then they just start growing back. So if you chop them at the roots rather than pulling them out, they just grow back and keep on going. These were garlics. Clearly not a good spot for garlic because they're not growing as they should. I don't feel any faith that I will get any actual garlics out of those. Some more spring onions at the back. Got curly parsley in the back and some new flat leaf parsley growing there. I don't know why, but the rats and possums aren't eating my parsley yet this year. We are finally getting a whole lot of broad beans from our broad bean plant. Now these I think are too big. I think I should have picked those already. I will pick those today. I think from what I've read, that's about the right size to pick them. Apparently the smaller they are, as long as the beans inside are formed, the more tender they are. I'm probably going to cook with them and make dips and stuff with them. So I don't mind if they're a little bit bigger. But they are definitely ready to start harvesting. But look at this, something gross is going on. There. Check out all those critters on there. I don't know what they are. They're like aphids, but they kind of look different to aphids. And ordinarily I would be wiping them off and squishing them and working very hard to get rid of them. But this plant is coming to the end of its days anyway. So I'm actually going to leave them there and hope that they might attract ladybugs. If you know exactly what these are, they're like normal aphids, but they've got more black legs. If you know exactly what they are, talk to me, fill me in and tell me if I'm right, will they attract the ladybirds? It's time to harvest these guys. Oh. 
Now this is pretty cool because for a while I didn't think we were going to get any broad beans. For a long time they looked like they were doing nothing and if I didn't have them in pots I would have pulled them out a long time ago. But we got there eventually. Patience is key. I'm going to open one of these up just for interest's sake. Show you what's in there. Inside that one pod we had four broad bean beans. There you go. Here's another sign that it's tomato time. These are my naturally seeded tomatoes that were just must have been seeds from compost or something. How many plants have I got there? One, two, three, four. I think I might have pulled a couple of extras out but I've just let them go. Um, they are very happy. Lots of flowers on there. Lots of flowers on there growing in amongst uh, my red amaranth, which I think is also going to seed. And it's quite a small pot too, so go figure. Oh, there you go. There's a little tomato on there. I thought my snow peas had stopped producing. We had that warm burst of weather here in Melbourne and I had lots of lovely snow peas on there, which I ate, and then I was just getting no more flowers. So I thought that was the end of it. And then we had a little cold burst and here we go. They're starting to flower again. I'd previously been tossing up, I'd read sort of conflicting reports about how late you can plant snow peas in Melbourne and how well they cope with the heat. I'm getting the sense from what's happened recently, they really don't like the heat and they do better in the cold. But I'm really hoping these flowers turn into snow peas and I'm guessing they'll be the last ones we get. You can see they're starting to look a little bit worse for wear, all those leaves. Check out how good my new food cubes are going. You can see I've got little barriers up everywhere. These barriers at the front are actually ball barriers. <laughs> they're not to, designed to be climbed up. It's so the kids can play here and not smash balls into this garden bed. But just look at how well everything's doing. This is my rocket. You can see I've harvested that rocket and this lot is growing beautifully. I've got cos lettuce here, which is really happy. Got my beans, two lots of beans, more lettuce. For whatever reason, those heads are looking even bigger. A couple of capsicum plants there. They're growing slowly, but a little bit faster than my capsicum plants elsewhere. My watercress is going gangbusters. Last video I said I didn't really know how to eat watercress. Well, I am a pro now. You literally do just chop it up and chuck it in salads and it's delicious. I can't pick this watercress quickly enough at the moment, which is such a surprise because I didn't know if it would grow well in this environment. I thought it needed to be in like a water environment to grow. So what I do is I just then pick off those little bits and then that whole lot can be eaten. got kind of like a peppery flavor to it. So when I add it into salads, I make sure I mix it in with other things that are a little bit softer. And I usually add a bit of lemon in the dressing or a bit of other fruit in the salad. And it's really yummy. Another tomato plant growing in the middle with some lovely buds there. More beans. More lettuce. These lettuces are looking really healthy. Endive, which we've been really enjoying. It just adds a little bit of a bitter, tasty pop to salads. Here I have cucumbers. Specifically, these are going to be green apple cucumbers. So they'll be round ones. My thought here is that I'm going to get them draping over the side. I hope that doesn't create too much of an opportunity for rats to climb up there. But we'll give it a go. And if it doesn't work... I'll relocate them or ladder them up somewhere. I have just posted a full review of the food cube beds and how everything grew week on week, in particular how they compare to other things in the garden. If you're interested in checking out that review, I will put a link in the description and I'll also put a link into where you can find the products if you want to check them out. They are all local Australian made and mostly made with recycled products, which I love. Hiding in here, I've also got some um, peas. I think they're sugar snap peas and snow peas, again, just to sort of test how well they'll grow with this weather warming up a little bit. May or may not work. And over here, these climbers, I've got some cucamelons. They don't look particularly healthy, so I'm not convinced these are going to thrive, but I could sense pretty early on, it might be because they're a bit blocked from the sun. I could sense early on that they weren't thriving. So I've got some more 
that I seeds that I've sown inside in my hydroponic setup and I'll show you how they're going. So to take you inside for a moment, this is my eco kitchen, my gatherer, and you can see here is the cucumelon plant that I stuck a seed in for as a backup to make sure I ended up with some cucumelons regardless. You can see it's growing much quicker, it's a lot healthier, and I will move it outside as soon as I start seeing little flowers on there, I think. But I want it to be long and tall enough that I can make sure it gets plenty of sunshine right up the back of that space. Also in here, I've got some little kale seedlings that I'll stick in the garden too when I'm ready to. My basil that's been there forever and I just keep chopping that off and reusing it. At the back, this is another cucumber plant. And again, I just wanted to see how well it would do in here. It was more an experiment and that's looking pretty healthy. I could put that out in the garden now, but I'm actually going to let it grow longer in here and just see how it goes. Here are some of my other garlics down here um, and I just don't feel like they're thriving. Why not? I don't know. Maybe they're not getting enough sun. First time growing garlic and I'm feeling like it hasn't been a huge success. In this little pot here, we've got some strawberry plants that are growing bigger. That should give us some strawberries when the weather warms up a bit. These are just some little lettuce seedlings. Oh, they've been eaten. Someone's been in there, chomped on that one and not those two. Over here, I've got my capsicums that I overwintered from last year. One of them I chopped right back, hoping that it would grow better. You can see I've got plenty of little capsicum buds in there. This one I kept a bit bigger and it's actually doing just as well. So the rules say cut them right back. I didn't, and they're still growing lots of new little buds that will turn into capsicums. These pots aren't huge, but they seem happy enough in there. I'm just making sure I keep them well fertilized. I've got a random mishmash in this bed. This bed that had a huge log fall down and smash the sides. So yeah, this is kind of like my poor man's bed. This is a chili plant. This is a lettuce, which I plan to pull out fairly soon. Uh, these are a couple of cucumbers and another naturally seeded tomato. Look at that one, that one's huge. And you can see it's just randomly growing out the side there because I've obviously had some tomato seeds in my compost. Happy as anything. Really glad I didn't move that one. Lots of buds. No idea what variety it's gonna be. And here I've got a thyme plant, which is just slowly ticking away. Things are going well inside my veggie pod too. Let me lift this up and show you. Lettuces are doing beautifully. Watercress is also doing really nicely in there. My strawberries have been swamped. Uh, yeah, I know I've planted this out really poorly, but it was more just an experiment to see what would do well. Those strawberries are doing really well, but I need to find a better system or put some more mulch or something in there because if you have a look underneath these strawberries, they're a bit rotten on the bottom. So if you've got any good tips on keeping strawberries healthy without them rotting on the underside other than just more mulch please leave me a comment and let me know parsley is doing really nicely more rocket uh, i should probably pull that out because this is all becoming a bit too crowded beautiful kale at the back quite happy in there and some spring onion also happy in there so that's my veggie pod so you might notice a big change from last month is all this empty space at the back here. That was cluttered up with pots, which I've slowly been eating and clearing out. Some of them I've obviously moved behind there, including my capsicums. The last one standing over here is going to be my watermelon hub. So I've got two little watermelon plants in here. The problem with watermelons is they take up a lot of space and then you've got these big fruits that need to be supported somehow. So my plan is to actually, so I've got another watermelon plant there that I'm gonna stick in there and I've got a couple more upstairs. My plan is to actually grow the vine through here and then back up onto the top. So they've got something to sort of grow along and rest on. If you needed any proof that I truly am a gardening nerd, <laughs> This year for my birthday, 
Uh, my husband bought me all gardening things for my birthday, which I love. So I've got a few new tools here, which are from Hoselink, and I also got a new hose. <laughs> I never thought I'd be excited by that. I got a new hose, which I'll show you in a minute. But um, for now, what I am talking to you about is watermelons. So here's two more watermelon plants. I've had these inside because I just wanted to see which would grow better. It's a lot warmer inside. I've had them by a window. If you have a look there, you can actually see there's some flowers on there. And they definitely aren't going to get pollinated inside. So I think it's time to plant these. I'll stick all three in here. See how they go. Last year I got one watermelon because, and the only reason I got it is because I worked out right at the end of the season to hand pollinate. For whatever reason, the bees weren't pollinating my watermelons and I kept getting all these great little buds that just turned into nothing and dropped off. As Soon as I started hand pollinating, uh, I got three that were growing into watermelons from just one plant and two of those watermelons got eaten by possums. One survived. This year, I'm gonna have five watermelon plants and I might end up with a jungle in the backyard or I might just end up with a few that thrive and a few watermelons. All right, do you wanna see my hose? So here's the hose from Hoselink, which I'm pretty sure is another Aussie brand. The best thing about it is that I can pull it out, use it, and then it puts itself away. And I don't have to do that whole winding up thing the whole time. It doesn't kink. Let's go. I've got a number of zucchini plants in the garden. This one looks really healthy and happy. Oh, you can even see some baby zucchinis in there. But I've also got a couple more zucchinis upstairs, which I'll show you in a second, which are not looking like that. And I don't really know why. Also down here, I've got my rosemary, which is doing pretty well and my sage, which is starting to get eaten by the green caterpillars. You can see all these holes in here. The white, oh, there you go. You can see one right there. Those beautiful white butterflies that you see flying around. They lay eggs, they turn into caterpillars and they eat all your food. I'll show you some of those eggs in a minute. I've also got a whole video on cabbage white butterflies and these little critters. If you want to learn more about it, I will put a link in my description. So let's go upstairs and check out my new garden beds. These are the beautiful things that my father-in-law Rod made for me. And I am loving them. So we'll start with this one. Got endive in here. Let me zoom you in a bit closer. Endive in here. I've got a bunch of chili and capsicum plants throughout here that are growing really slowly. This is my first capsicum plant that's a new baby this year that's actually started to show buds. And this one came from the shop, so it was a little bit more developed. Now, what I was saying about those little caterpillars, you can see cabbage white butterflies love laying their eggs on brassicas kale they love laying their eggs on kale there we go that's what their eggs look like so if you see these little white dots on your plants get rid of them flick them off i've found that if you do flick them off they don't um then sort of grow elsewhere you just sort of remove them just remove them with your finger and they don't seem to survive once they're off that spot but when i started looking I just found them everywhere. Funny thing is my five-year-old actually spotted it. I've taught him well. He, we love butterflies, we love bees, but if the butterflies are white, alarm bells go off. Here's another one, another few just there. Can you see those ones? They're all gonna turn into little caterpillars and they start tiny. So you will notice the holes before you notice the caterpillars because these tiny little holes come through 
And to begin with, they're actually really hard to see. Down here, got some more tomatoes here. So you can see that tomato plant is a little bit more developed. Flowers and fruit. This one is a smaller plant. Let me just mix that up a bit. But lots of beautiful tomatoes growing on there. I've planted a random lettuce at the back, which I got from the Kindy fundraiser. That's one from Jamie's garden. That one's going beautifully, but my lettuces over here have been smashed. So out of everything in the garden, these are the things that the rats are loving at the moment. I am suspicious it's because they're right near my compost. So there's probably something there and or there that is appealing to the rats and I have just found a little hole under here. So I wonder if they're actually sneaking into my compost by going under there because you're eating my lettuce here and nothing else other than my coriander seems to be getting bugged. You can see they ate this coriander, which is why I've covered it up. Even a really simple covering like that, that's just a food covering, does seem to make a difference. And I covered this one up too. And there it is. That coriander is much happier. More basil, celery down here, dill at the back, and more cucumbers. And I have stuck some little leek, tiny little leek in there to see how they go. Some of my little pots from downstairs I've moved up here just to tidy up. Got some new carrots growing in there just because Chloe loved those so much. These are my thornless blackberries which are just slightly getting bigger. And at the back, <laughs> I told you I had some zucchinis that just weren't doing well, and I don't know why. Maybe the soil, the pots are huge, so that, that shouldn't be an issue right now. They're just looking a bit pathetic, aren't they? If that makes sense to anyone, talk to me. Tell me what's going on. And some more berries at the back there, the raspberries. And the final thing we've got growing in our home at the moment, uh, which I introduced you to last month. I'll give you a little update on that one too. We're past halfway now. If I push it out, I look way more pregnant. There you go. I look like I'm nearly full term. I'm not. I'm about just past halfway uh, and feeling a lot better than I have in the past.